right, so we have some information on logic. We're starting chapter three, and what we're going to be talking about with with logic, we have things called statements and quantifiers. We have truth tables and equivalent statements. We have conditional statements and circuits, um, more conditional statement information, Euler diagrams, and arguments and things with truth tables. So today we're going to just start off with some basics about statements and quantifiers. And under statements we're talking about negation, we're talking about different symbols, what I mean by quantifiers, sets of numbers. So first of all, a couple of definitions. A statement is defined as just a declarative sentence that's not true or false. Um, that's sorry, that's either true or false, but not both simultaneously. So an example of that would be, I teach at Germana. That's just a statement. It is a true statement, um, but it doesn't really say anything more than that. Um, another statement could be something like, it is 90 degrees outside today. Um, that is, a, uh, I think, a true statement. Um, it could be false, but it's not true and false. Sorry about that. Um, so that's what they mean by statements. Okay, so a compound statement is formed when you combine two statements together. Um, they usually have, or they do have the word and, or, or not, and they're sometimes written in if-then format. So an example would be something like, I teach at Germana and Spotsylvania County Schools. Uh, another example would be if you have a triangle, then it has three sides. So again, there's different ways to set up a, a compound statement. So let's look at our first example. So let's decide whether each of the following is compound. So the first one said, if Amanda said it, then it must be true. So because the words if and then were used in the statement, this is considered a compound statement. The second example, the gun was made by Smith and Wesson. So this is basically just a factual statement about a gun. The gun was made by the company called Smith and Wesson. So you have to watch out the word and does not automatically make it a compound statement. Um, so this would not be a compound statement. Um, it's just a declarative statement. Okay. All right, so then we have something called negations. And negations are when you do the opposite of something. So instead of saying, um, I went to the store, you would say, I did not go to the store. Or instead of saying, um, it has three sides, you would say, it does not have three sides. So the example we have here is that Max has a valuable card is a statement, so the negation of that would be Max does not have a valuable card. So the negation is always the opposite of what you have. So if, again, I said, I did not go to the pool today, then the negation of that would be, I did go to the pool today. So then we talk about inequality symbols. And this is something that, that people tend to have a hard time remembering. Um, and one of the things I'd like for you to try and think about is what direction the arrows are pointing. Um, in the first example, the arrow is pointing to the left. And if you think about a number line, the numbers on the left-hand side of the number line are your smaller numbers. Those are the negative ones. So the first symbol means less than. So A is less than B. If I switch the symbol to the other direction, it's now pointing to the right, and the numbers on the right-hand side of a number line are bigger, so A is greater than B. Um, the other two symbols are less than or equal to and greater than or equal to, so you just need to make sure you're familiar with those symbols. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to give me the negation of the inequalities, but I don't want you to just put a slash through it like we do with equal signs. I want you to actually come up with another symbol. So the first symbol says P is less than 3. So P is all of the numbers that are less than 3. 
So the opposite of less than would be greater than, but I could also have numbers that are equal to 3. So the negation of p is less than 3 would be p is greater than 3. I'm sorry, greater than or equal to 3. <clears throat> the second example, we have the equation 3x minus 2y is greater than or equal to 12. So the negation of that would be all the values that are less than 12. So I hope this is helping so far. So then we're going to compare some of these symbols that we've been using. Um, so we've, we talked previously about sets and we used the union symbol and the uh, intersection symbol. So again, we're going to use the same type of symbol. The connection for AND, which we used as intersection before, is the upside down V in this case. And that's called the conjunction. And again, that's intersection. It's what do they have in common? Um, or is the V or the upside down or the U in the other case? And that's called disjunction. And that was what we referred to as the union before. Um, not is the tilde symbol, uh, the squiggly line. And the tilde symbol represents negation. So anytime you see the tilde symbol, we're talking about negation. So let's say that we have P represents the statement that it is a rainy or it is raining. So it's just a simple statement. And Q represents the statement, it is March. So if we want to write the symbolic statements in words, the V statement represents the word or. So we would say it is raining or it is March. The second statement says do the intersection of those two or use the word and. So we would say it is raining and it is March. And then we do the negation of that. So we would end up saying, it is not the case that it is raining and it is March. So again, if we look at these symbols, this symbol that we see here represents the word or. So anytime we see that word, we want to think of the word or. P represents the statement, it is raining. And Q represents the statement, it is March. So we put the two statements together. It is raining. It is March. And because of the symbol, we use the word or. In the second example, we have the negation symbol on the outside. So it says negate whatever is in here. So P is, it is raining. Q is, it is March. The symbol we have here represents the word and. And then what we're saying here, it is not the case because of the negation symbol that it is raining and it is March. So quantifiers are words such as all, each, every, none. These are called universal quantifiers. That, but words that we have such as some or there exists, a little bit more abstract, those are called existential quantifiers. So when we start putting these things together, we end up with negations of those. So the negations of all is some. So instead of saying all people go to the pool, we would say some people go to the pool. That's the negation. Or some people do not. Um, the negation, if I had the statement some people do something, the negation of that would be none of the people do that. So these are some of the examples that we're going to talk about now.
All right, so if I have the statement, some cats have fleas, if I wanted to do, do the negation of that, we already talked about some, the negation of some is none. So instead of saying some cats have fleas, I would say no cats have fleas. Let's look at the answers and we'll talk about them at the same time. Okay, so instead of saying some cats have fleas, we would say no cats have fleas. On the second example, it says some cats do not have fleas. So the negation of some is all. So here, what I'm going to say here is instead of some cats do not have fleas, we're going to say all cats have fleas. Here I say no cats have fleas. The negation of no cats is some cats have fleas. All right, and this was something that we talked about earlier. Natural numbers are the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, starting with 1. Whole numbers would have 0 and the natural numbers. Integers have the negative numbers and the whole numbers. And rational numbers and different things like that. So this is nothing new, but we're going to use that information on the next question. So the first thing is to, we want to decide whether this is a true or false statement. So every integer is a natural number. So if we look at this, and we go back and look at our examples, integers are negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. So all I have to do is find one case that's not true and the statement's not true. So it says all integers, or it says every integer is a natural number. Well, negative 3 is an integer. But negative 3 is not a natural number. So I could use that as what I call my counterexample. It's an example that proves it false. So the example that we have here that says every integer is a natural number would be a false statement because the number negative 3 is an integer, but it's not natural. Okay, so the next example says there exists a whole number that is not a natural number. So again, we have to figure that out. So the number 1 is a whole number, but it is also a natural number. 2 is a whole number, but it is also natural. So we're looking for a whole number that is not a natural number, and that example would be 0. 0 is a whole number, but it is not a natural number. So the first statement was false. We used the example negative 3. Uh, it's false because there is a negative number that is an integer that's not natural. And the second statement is true. There is a whole number, 0, that is not a natural number. All right, I hope this helps. And just keep in touch with me. Let me know how things are going.